Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Lee Olin Bowen, and I'm an outreach manager on the education programs team here at code.org. I've had the pleasure of speaking with a lot of amazing professionals during the CS Journeys class chats this semester, but today is a personal favorite. Today I'm speaking with Genevieve Johnson, Senior Instructional Designer for Roblox, an online game pl platform and game creation system that allows users to program games and play games traded by other users. It is also one of my son's favorite game platforms. I'm so excited to speak with her today about her experiences assisting in the creation of the Roblox world. Hi, Genevieve. Hi, Leolyn. So the first question I have is a very serious question that came from my 11-year-old son, Matteo, who wants to know if you get paid in Roblox. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. So yeah, sometimes um, if I wanna make Robux, then I gotta go make my game and earn them just, just like Mateo. Then we're very disappointed to hear, but thank <laughs> you for sharing that. So can you take a couple of minutes to introduce yourself and your role at Roblox? So my name is Genevieve Johnson. I am a senior instructional designer for Roblox. And what that means is I teach people how to teach people how to make games and experiences and all the different kinds of events that you see on Roblox. So that means I get to work with teachers like all like all across the world. And I work with them to bring Roblox into the classroom so students can do really, really cool things. Perfect, yeah. And how does computer science um, play in your career? So I use computer science every single day. So as I'm creating these new worlds, and actually, if you give me a second, I can actually show mm -hmm. you something. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen out. So this is Roblox Studio and within Roblox Studio, this is where all of the different worlds that you see on Roblox are made, like everything in Roblox made right here, Roblox Studio. And within it, if I want to take something that maybe just a giant world, like, you know, nothing's really particular happening. Like I've got this, this island, but I've got some pirate ships over there. If I want to make those pirate ships shoot cannonballs or something like that, then I could have to use code. So I get to teach people how to both create the world and then also how to use code to make those worlds come really to life. Thank you, that, that is so cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's so fun to see the background about how that works. Thanks for sharing. And before we go on to the next question, I just want to remind everyone who is watching that we will have time for questions throughout. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and we will try to get to them all. So can you tell us a little bit more about um, a recent project you've worked on that you've really enjoyed? Okay, so probably the thing that I am most proud of right now is that I just finished my second book and it's called Coding of Roblox Lua in 24 Hours. So within that book, I actually get to teach people from the very beginning how to code. If you want to see a picture of the cover, this is a picture of the cover right here, Coding with Roblox Lua in 24 hours. You can get it pretty much anywhere. But I really take people from the start with what's a variable, what's a string, and then I take them all the way up to doing like really cool things. So um, somewhere back here, I've got, <laughs> I've got a lot of files up. I do a lot of work on a daily basis. Um, so actually this is what I was looking for. So the, like my favorite project in all of this is like actually not only like me getting to be creative, but allowing the people who visit my worlds being creative. So you can actually use code to allow your, your visitors in your world to also place objects. So like if they've got a house, they can decorate it. If they've got a garden, they can put in flowers. So the stuff like that, and it's all within that book, everything from the very, very beginning, assuming that you've never touched code in your life, um, all the way up to some very sophisticated topics. And for the students who may not have heard of Lua, can you explain a little bit more about that? what that is? Lua is a lot like Python, if you've ever used Python. So it is a text-based language. Um, but there's a lot less to type than there is in maybe perhaps a lot of other different programming languages. So if you've ever done Java, you're going to find there's a lot less typing. But also, if you've done something on the other side like Scratch, where maybe you've done some visual drag and drop coding, you're going to find those concepts that you learned are still going to help you as you're learning a new programming language with Lua. Perfect. Thank you. And so can you tell us, Genevieve, um, what kind of things do you like to do outside of work? 
So I really believe in having a lot of hobbies and things like that. Uh, I believe, because I like making games, I like making it worlds and experiences. Um, I like making stories. So I I play a lot of video games for one. So I, I think on, on, my, on my desk, I've got just about every type of controller there is. Um, and then I also do a lot of art. So I've always been really big into art. Um, and then I lift, I go to the gym. And I spend time with my little tortoise, who I love so, so dearly. Yay. Is, 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 yeah, I would love to see her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, so this is, this is, this is Tenochi Lan. We just call her Nochi. She is oh. a three-year-old Burmese star. So she's absolutely the love of my life. Um, so I spend a lot of time just finding flowers for her to eat and then feeding them to her. And growing like I I'm growing that. a whole garden for her, basically. So this is Nochi. She's so cute. Thanks for sharing her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just saying earlier, she's not really a morning tortoise. So I had to give her a nice warm bath. You know, it's like the equivalent of, of tortoise coffee to like wake her up and I'd be like, all right, what are we doing out this morning? We're not doing things this early normally. What's going on? <laughs> I love that. Yes, I can relate to not being a morning person, as I'm sure some of the students watching can as well. <laughs> Um, so my next question is when you were younger, what did you want to be when you grew up? So the first thing I want to be was a veterinarian. Um, as you know, I love animals like Nochi being one example of how much I love animals. And, you know, I really liked raising birds and, and rabbits and all those kinds of things. But then I kind of decided that that didn't work for me. Um, so that's what I wanted to be when I was younger. Cause I was just so fascinated with science and like seeing like how animals and genetics could be bred for different things. Yeah. So how did you um, end up in coding then? Because being a veterinarian and being a working in uh, game design seems totally different. You know, <laughs> how that work? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of, to me, it's really sort of fascinating. So I, I decided I didn't want to be a veterinarian, um, but I loved drawing animals. I, I was always really fascinated by this, a lot of the science behind like the way anatomy works. Uh, so I kind of like started leaning more into like here, I'll show you. So this is this is a dragon that I, I drew in, in high school. Like I literally drew it in high school. But as a kind of a lifelong passion, I was always like, how do dragons work? They don't exist, right? Like how do their wings work? How do their legs work? How does their tail? Like what's the anatomy that makes that work? So kind of like through those questions, um, that's sort of like how it relates to like animals. Like, so like having to study like bat wings or having to study like a lizard's tail or even like a horse's head to figure out how do I make these completely imaginary animals that don't exist. And then uh, one day this guy came into my classroom. He was an old student of my art teacher. He was working for uh, the film industry making monsters. So he like came in with like these giant clay busts you know like the head torsos and like uh, of these like monsters like these like sort of predator looking monsters like you know that he'd been sculpting and he explained that this is what he did for a living and I was like that's what I want to do for a living mm -hmm. and then from art to the cut so like I went I decided to explore doing computer graphics because I was really into tech and animation turned out I didn't really care for modeling I computer modeling is like you you make the the actual figure that you know people can then manipulate to to animate in the world um because it just like wasn't alive enough for me so then i started exploring animation which i loved and that came back to that scientific observation how do things work and that led me eventually to game development um not only could i just like make this animal come to life i could make this whole entire world come to life i can make things that never existed and the more that i wanted to do the more i had to learn how to code the more i had to learn how to like get in there if i wanted that explosion if i wanted that dragon to fly i had to learn how to code to make that happen and so before I started working at code.org, and I imagine this might be true for a lot of the students who are watching right now, when I hear about someone who's a coder, I think I have to be really, really smart and I have to be really, really good at math. Yeah, I am <laughs> are so those things true? Bad. Yeah, no, 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 no. I am so bad at math. Uh, I'm literally dyslexic. So like I can understand how math works, but then like the numbers just don't stay in place for me. Uh, same thing, you know, like with reading and like people, but with code i really came at it because i'm more of an artistic person and i really love thinking about how things work uh so that's not true at all i would say you know even if you can't spell if you're not like a good writer there's autocorrect for code there's you know all these different engines that will help you 
like handle the code and how the logic works. So I will say most of the engineers I know are actually very fun and creative zany people. So that, that sort of stereotype is in, yeah, out there. Okay, there that's good to know. Up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would say good to know. anyone can code. I always tell people like, it doesn't matter what you like, you can breed code. Like if you like music or football or you know any other sports or animals, there's something that code can do to, to um, help your, your interest out or to spread the word about it. So I'm interested because you said a, a little bit ago that you love playing games. So when I play Roblox, I love tycoon games. I love uh -huh. being able to build. I love seeing my money accumulate. I love that that world of being able to build something within this game. What type of games do you um, enjoy playing? I really like, actually, I do like tycoons. I find them really like soothing. You just sort of like build something and then you click a button and then you build something else. Um, <laughs> But I tend to like weird zany games. And that's what I really love about Roblox is like, you'll have all of a sudden someone will make it like a world. That's not even a game as we know it. It might be this beautiful recreation of how an ancient Greek temple looked like. And then, you know, so I'll go wander through it and just sort of like experience like the Zen of that temple. Or like uh, sometimes there'll be these story games where if you make a wrong choice, the narrator will be kind of snarky and they'll make funny jokes. Uh, and there's one there's one game that I, I really, really love called This Is Not a Simulator, a Game in a White Box. And it, if you if you like, it'll give you these choices where you can be like, oh, you want to skip this or and then if, if you're if you snark back to the narrator, it'll just kick you out of the game. So I love really weird games. I also love peaceful games. And then like at home, I play I play everything. And I think that's kind of a, a good thing to do as a developer, like play everything. Don't feel precious about like, oh, I'm into shooters and I'm into this. And I like I can like fashion games and shooters. So. Yeah, I think that's what makes the specific game platform so great is there's a variety of, of games that uh, people can play depending on what they like or maybe even what they like that day. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, sometimes I'm like, I just want to stroll through some woods and just sort of like look at pretty things. Exactly. Um, and so along your way um, to your career that you are now, what kind of obstacles have you faced? And um, if any, how have, how have you gone about approaching them? So probably, I would say probably the, the biggest obstacle for me was when I was younger, I didn't really know how I was going to go to college. Um, so I was scared to even really try to go to college because I didn't know how my family was going to be able to afford that. My older brother, like, he would have these sort of periods where even with a scholarship, he would have to come back home for a while and then, and then try again. Um, so instead of like, you know, just giving up, what I did is I, you know, as I was working in my retail jobs, I just went to community college and I just took what I could and my art teachers there were really great as well as like my mom was really great. You know, everyone is like, hey, it doesn't really matter how long it takes you. If there's this thing you want to do, you got to keep working at it. And doesn't, you know, don't judge yourself by what other people are doing. So I, I went to community college for four years and then eventually I was able to get enough, you know, money together and my, get my credit enough, you know, high enough up to, to get a loan on my own to go to college and finish out the other two years, but that also took me four years. So it took me eight years to get through college. Um, so that, that was probably, I would say like the, the biggest thing, obstacle that I've had in terms of my career is just like not getting impatient with the amount of time it was taking me to get to where I thought I should be. Yeah, I, I, I can imagine that'd be a struggle because we, especially with college, we hear that you're supposed to finish in four years. So if it takes you a little longer, I can imagine that could be a little um, worrisome or frustrating. So it's good to hear that you say that you kept working at it and you're here now. Yeah, yeah that's really it. Great. Like, yeah, I mean, you'll get there eventually. Uh, you know, life is both short, short and long. So just keep working at it. Like, you know, and you'll, you'll regret trying far less than you'll regret, like not even trying. Yeah. Were there any people, whether it's school or family or anything like that, who've helped you along the way and, and how so? You know, there's so many people that helped me along the way. Like I so said, a lot of teachers who knew that I was taking one or two classes while go, I would say working two jobs, sometimes three jobs during like the holiday season, um, you know, that were able to talk to me. And, and I say like, talk, if you are in tough situations, talk to your teachers, let them know what's up. Let your school officials know what's up. At one point I was falling asleep on a couch and one of my school advisors was like, just tell me and I'll come and wake, up, wake you up, make sure you don't miss class. Um, but also my mom. 
So my mom is Mexican American. I'm mixed. So my mom, no matter what I was doing, it didn't matter if I was working at a bookstore or like just going to a comic book store. My mom was like, we need more Mexican American women in the bookstore. Like, you know, we need more Mexican American women representing us in tech. And I was like, yeah, mom, you're right. You know, and and even though I myself am, you know, very white passing, I'm I'm mixed, you know, my last name is Johnson. Um, that also like sticks with me. Like, how can I be a representation of that? How can I help people who, um, you know, and bring them into the space that maybe like I was more comfortable in, you know, but someone who, you know, doesn't feel more comfortable in that space. How can I make them feel more comfortable? Because I'm very used to being the only woman in the room or being like, you know, the only person of, of mixed ethnicity or whatever it may be. I'm very like comfortable with that because I've been you know I did martial arts as a kid I go to the gym like you know in the video game world all that's gotten better but trying to be very comfortable like no matter what you want to do like just go and do it don't look for other people just go and do it yeah I, I think your mom and I sound a lot alike my son is um uh, biracial as well black Caribbean and Colombian and so he definitely hears a lot of that from me as well of the importance of more than what he probably wants to hear but the importance of representation, importance of um, feeling comfortable with sometimes being the only person of um, whether it's gender, or race, or ethnicity, or all the other things that make us unique and fun. So um, I appreciate your mom. <laughs> for, yeah, for I didn't appreciate it as a kid. I have to say like, now that mm -hmm. I'm older, I really, I really appreciate it. I really understand what she was talking about. And I really appreciate it. She like, just never let me take like, oh, I don't know, what if I'm the only girl as, as like an excuse? She's like, well, then too bad. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, those things that make us different, make us really unique and give us a, a cool insight. So um, tell your mom, thanks. <laughs> so before, <laughs> we do have a couple more questions, but I just want to remind the audience that if you have any questions at all, feel free to put it in the chat box. We would love to hear um, any questions that you might have for Genevieve before in these last few minutes we have. Um, so going back up, you did show us that really amazing picture of the drawing that you drew. Uh, my dragon would look nothing like that. <laughs> Are there any other strengths that you have that you feel contributed to your success? Um, I said the, the, the ability to just be the only person in the room and never really worrying about that. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other abilities that I have. So I really like to think about um, the other person that I'm, you know, developing products for it. So to being able to look outside of yourself and be like, will this work for someone else? Will this experience, like if the person comes in, do they know where to go? Um, if I'm making, uh, I do a lot of tutorials, I do a lot of writing. So trying to think about like how someone else is gonna perceive my words. So I think like being able to take a lot of criticism and like, but seeing it as that makes me stronger, like looking actively seeking feedback. So always taking my, like whatever I'm doing, getting feedback from it and taking that as a way to be better and not like, oh no, they didn't like it. Yeah, that's a, that's a crucial skill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can get in that. Like, so if you're, if you're, um, if you're an artist or you're looking to start, you know, on Roblox or something, start making experience, just start working and start sharing it with your friends, share it with your family, get feedback. And if they're like, oh, this is too hard. Don't tell them that they don't understand take a step back and figure out, okay, how can I make this more a uh, more enjoyable experience? Perfect. So we do have a couple of teacher questions that are about your book. So um, oh, can yeah. you give us a little bit more information about it in terms of when it will it be released? Where could folks find it if they're interested in purchasing it? So you can actually get, um, there's two of them. And then if I, I think I closed out my picture. Uh, so one is Roblox development in 24 hours. That one is currently available and the cover looks very, very similar. So let me, yeah, I did close it out. Uh, but, and then there's, that one is already out. So that'll teach you things about like, how do you make terrain work? It does have a lot of coding within it. Cause honestly, once to really make things come alive, you just need code. Uh, but that the code in there is much more like, here's the code that you add in, but with coding in 24 hours during Roblox Lua, that one, which is coming out next month. Um, and if people are really interested, you can actually reach out to me at education at roblox.com. So that's our, if you guys want to know, you know, anything more about like the creative commons materials that we have available or our education website, yeah, education at roblox.com, um, education.roblox.com is the website, but um, the coding book will be out next month. How exciting. That's I know, I'm so, so excited. So I'm so excited for this one. Like I love, teaching code and like I feel like this is just the culmination of everything I've done so far 
So. Yeah, and especially in this topic, let me tell you, when I take my son to the library and I see the kids playing on the computer, all of them are playing Roblox. Like <laughs> it's so popular, so it's really exciting. Um, another audience question is, are, do you all, um, you just gave your email if, if folks have questions, do you all offer in-person coding classes that uh, people can attend? So we don't, so we don't, but like what we like to do is um, we offer up this Creative Commons materials, we offer good resources like the books that were created. And then we have like hundreds, literally hundreds of education, you know, uh, organizations that we work with. Everything from curriculum um, distributors and publishers to, you know, like mom and pops, you know, so you can take our creative common materials, you can use them in your classroom as is, or you can um, work with one of our many, many like fantastic educators. And they also, you know, that could provide, uh, I would say resources and materials as well, as well as instruction. Yeah, but we ourselves don't actually offer classes directly. Okay. We have um, a lot of onboarding for teachers though. So if you come to our website, like we've got courses for you that you can kind of be like, oh, this is how Roblox works. This is how you make an account. This is how you play a game. Yeah, I imagine that'll be very useful to the parents <laughs> and teachers watching. <laughs> yeah, you know, we try to be very considerate. Like, you, you know, this is how you, you use the keyboard to move around. So the next audience question actually ties in perfectly with the next question that I had for you, which is about um, being able to work at a company like Roblox. So if a student is watching this and they're like, yes, this is what I, I wanna do. I would love to be in game design and I would love to work for Roblox. What, what does that look like? What does, what steps can they one start working on now? And then part two of that question is what does the interview process look like for someone who, who wants to do what you do? So I would say if you want to work, um, you know, making virtual experiences or at Roblox specifically, uh, start working on it now. I would say so many of the, the employees at Roblox started from the community. We love hiring community members because they understand what our platform's about. They have fantastic skills and they're motivated. So um, I would say whatever it is, if you're an artist, you know, go and draw like everything around you, draw animals, draw the trees at the park, draw the buildings, um, and then take that in to Roblox and recreate your local park or your school and recreate your drawings. If you're interested in animation, then you can try that out. Uh, if you're interested in coding, we have great resources like on our site, education.roblox.com, uh, that are free as well as like I said, you can reach out to your coach, but just like start. My point is start, try a little bit of everything. Um, and you'll start developing a portfolio and then reach out to community members so you can get onto the forums. We have developer forums for, but we also have like um, an educator section of the developer forums. You can reach out to like your peer groups if you're a student. So you can, you know, your friends, you know, try to, to create an experience together with your friends. Uh, you know, there's, there's apps, you know, like Discord or other, you know, Roblox groups or that are interested in, in developing their own experiences. So if like, if you love history, I guarantee, like, it doesn't matter like what era of history, it could be a very specific, these two years of history, you can find groups on Roblox that also love history and want to make experiences that recreate that era or, you know, allow you to experience what it was like to live in that time or go to the moon, no matter what it was, or be, a, you know, a zookeeper. And so as you just keep working with people, make friends, show your work off, get on Twitter, get on, you know, social media and be willing to both give positive feedback. And I mean, like critical feedback, be like, oh, I think you could do this a little bit better, but also take it, ask people for feedback. And that's how you develop these relationships that down the line are very valuable. And then as you get older in college um, and in high school, go to conferences. So there's SIGGRAPH, which is a conference that is for computer graphics and animation in particular. Volunteering is a great way to go, I would say more cheaply than you could otherwise. And you also get like instant access to like everyone there who also really loves what you love. Uh, PAX is another good one. That's a giant gaming convention that happens on all coasts. You can uh, volunteer as well. Um, so yeah, the moral of the story comes is just start doing it and start looking for other people who wanna do it with you. Can you um, say again those two conferences that you just mentioned? Can you spell it out just in case people need to write them down? SIGGRAPH is one that's a little not as well known. It's S-I-G-G-R-A-P-H, Special Interest Group in Computer Graphics. Um, that's what it stands for. So it's part of AMC, uh, Association Machine Computing. And then PAX is P-A-X, like xylophone. PAX. Um, 
I don't know, Penny Arcade Expo. That's what it stands for. I was like, what does that stand for? So, <laughs> you know, that's just like a big gaming conference. You know, people will dress up. Uh, but even there is a PAX dev, like, you know, like a developer section of that. But I would say even just becoming part of these communities where you can find like minded people. Um, other, like another huge one in the industry is GDC, the Game Developers Conference. That's the largest game developers conference that's held in San Francisco every year. Uh, so if you can go, go on like they all, they'll have student days. I highly recommend being a student volunteer whenever you can be. Um, and just like, meet, so yeah, meet other people, get involved with like your clubs at high, you know, at the high school level, you know, make your own club. I love that suggestion of volunteering at conferences. I think that's a good, behind, when, when you work in a field, that's a good way to networking and being able to go to conferences either for free or for less amount we're able to volunteer so yeah it's a good little nugget to take those and this, those people who are students when i was a student are now like some of my strongest you know i would say ties in the industry like always be nice to everyone you never know who they're going to be in a few years and a lot of times you know like you're like oh yeah wait i know so and so i met them a few years ago to go at a conference um and like those those ties are you know really important yeah, so you've talked, you showed us the cool work that you're doing, and I know you've probably seen a lot of <laughs> uh, games and experience in Roblox. Is there any game that you've seen that someone create that either was um, surprised you or you thought that was really cool and, and, and innovative? Oh my gosh, I mean, all the time. I'm, I'm like, I'm like overwhelmed because I'm just like, where do I even, even start? Um, so the on Roblox. All right, hold on. I feel like I need a, a visual, but it'll, it would take me too long to bring up. So I think what's really cool about Roblox experiences is that they can be these hangout spaces that aren't necessarily rooted in the real world. So if you, we just did like these, these concerts, like one of the ones that we did, we did like a 21 Pilots concert. Um, but what, as a, I love music and I love going to concerts. But what I kind of love, like you know, there was like this music going on, I can dress up my character, I had a scooter, but also like the way that we were experiencing the music was not a way we could do in real life. So it was like, we would get transported around. Um, we were like playing with the space that we were in. So we would be, you would be in one space and then you would fall through the floor and then you'd be in this like disco room and then you would be dancing and you would step on a square and then like suddenly you're like, uh, in a virtual forest and, and then like all of a sudden like the the singers and the drummers you know like they'll be giants while you're tiny little people dancing at their feet so I think like being able to take something like for me which is really familiar like going to a concert and then like twisting it so not just are we trying to do like recreate real life we're trying we're taking advantage of what virtual reality you know like a, not even like a headset but like what that virtual space can do to like help you connect to the music a lot more than like maybe you even could if you're up in the nosebleeds of some giant concert like you know 21 pilots i, I would probably be like that far away and you'd be like look this where are they at like <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. yeah oh man i wish we had more time but yeah. somehow we got through 30 minutes that quickly so <laughs> i wanted to say thank you for joining us today yeah it was really great to hear about your experiences um working at roblox and, being, and working in game design so thank you for your time today um, teachers, please fill out the survey that you will receive via email tomorrow, and be sure to check out the other class chats and virtual field trips at code.org slash csjourneys. They're happening all semester long. Thanks, Genevieve, and thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.